monster. I'm here to help you out. No, 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 this is... Go away. Jose Moreno Brooks comes from a family of lawyers. He has played football professionally but ends up choosing acting. The TV series that pushes his name in the show business is the comedy Telenovela, whose creator, producer and main actress is Eva Longoria. I had the pleasure of talking to somebody that I met recently, but we've had already a few experiences together that sounds so much worse than, <laughs> than it is. <laughs> Actor and filmmaker Jose Moreno Brooks. Hi, Jose. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for being here. Um, let's just start maybe to say that we did a project together. Right. Let's clarify that. <laughs> when we went that. together on set. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> I didn't mean anything else by that. Um, but let's start from the beginning a little bit. You were supposed to be a lawyer, I think. Yeah. Did instead, I tell you that? Instead, you became an actor. Yeah. How did that happen? How did Much that happen? to my mother's dismay. <laughs> uh, and I'm guessing there was some disappointment in that decision. Yeah, I think maybe part of her is still holding out hope that I, you know, will one day enroll find in law right, school. Find the right way for yeah. yourself in life. Yeah, the lost boy will come home. Yeah. Um, there's Ali. Ali! The cat. Uh, <laughs> yes, Ali is a cat. Um, yeah, I, I went to undergrad with the intention of going to law school and then uh, I never really questioned what I would do. I just, oh, it's a family business. My aunts, uncles, mom, grandfather, everybody's an attorney. So I'm the oldest grandson. So it was just kind of in my head, I think it was, I was like programmed to that that's what I'm going to do. And then once I was actually admitted into law school and going, I went that far. I was like, oh, wait a second, I'm going to spend, you know, however many thousands of dollars a year to go into debt to do something I don't even know if I want to do. So I took some time and tried modeling for a little bit and kind of hated that and then uh, fell into an acting class and I met a, a manager who, who might have actually just been interested in spending time with me rather than than mm. my career if you catch my yeah, drift. But horrible. well he got me my agent uh, my first agent, he got me a meeting. I didn't have credits, obviously, but they took a chance. And from there, it was like, I booked a co-star and then a year passed. And then I booked another co-star and then a year passed. And then I got my first guest star. And so it's, it was like that for a while until I was lucky enough to get on a, on a TV telenovela. series. A tel <laughs> telenovela, yeah. All right, everyone, listen up. In case the power goes out again, we need batteries and we need them stat. <laughs> Did that sound cool? No. 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 Hafi and Isabella, I need you to... Can't. Too sweaty. Why don't you cry about it? You know what we need? Energies. I found this candy bar in the sound department. <gasps> Seems like the boom guy has a sweet tooth and a serious porn addiction. Let's just cut it up and share it now. Is, is it real? Or is it like another pack of star blursts? Have you been holding out on us? What? No, I was saving it to share with everyone. I'll give you 50 bucks for it. I'll make out with you. I'll make out with you. We can all have some. We just have to cut it into teeny tiny little pieces. Get it! Get it! Get it! People are monsters! Give us the candy guy. You know what? Now no one gets any. <laughs> there. I actually enjoyed watching that show so much. It was like I waited every week for the episode that's to come so, out. That's so awesome. <laughs> it was so funny and so well made. <laughs> And I was so disappointed that it didn't uh, continue for another season. Yeah, you and me both. Yeah. But tell me more about the experience. First of all, how, how did you end up there? You were with Eva Longoria. You were one of the leads because yeah. you guys were like a big cast. Yeah. Uh, they, had, they had seen so many actors for the role of Gael at the point when I got a chance. And they weren't thrilled about any of the ones they had, I guess their options and they had two guys that they were going to test and then the casting director I, I auditioned for it was like the last person they saw the last couple of people and she said just see one more guy and so that was me and you know I, I did enough in those rooms to say okay let's test him but I learned after the fact that I wasn't the option like I wasn't really the choice they, they thought it was gonna be this other guy tons of credits um, uh, a bit older, very different than me. After I went, I went third. They were like, the network and the studio were like, well, that's the guy. 
and the producers and the casting director and Eva and everybody were like, well, he's never done that before. And it's like, well, let's see if he can do it again. So this is very rare. We went again. Everybody went again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, same thing happened. I did it again. And they were like, okay, well, that's the guy. But there's something great about being able to put on a completely different pair of pants. And like, yeah. or in that case, very tight, tiny <laughs> shorts that got progressively shorter over the season. By the end, I was like wearing nothing. <laughs> Uh, oh, here's Ali. Yeah, here's Ali. Ali has already <laughs> had a few shots. She's beautiful. She is. And she's a big girl. She's 18, right? She's 18. She's, she deserves respect, right? When she gets yeah. to be that old. <laughs> um, also, were you on some kind of a special like nutrition program and uh, workout when you were doing Gael? Because like you said, you were naked <laughs> most of the time. Yeah. Well, at least, you know, topless for sure. For sure. Uh, I mean, I definitely was. What's funny is the, my co-stars on that show would like be amazed at how much I would eat. Like I was eating a lot, but it was this amazing food, like two steaks, two chicken breasts, a fish fillet, like amazing food every day. So that helps when you have somebody cooking for you. Well, that uh, must have been such a fun period. I really hope they find a way to bring you back. I mean, Eva is pretty resourceful from what I know. For sure. How is it working with her? She seems so cool. She's so cool and she's so, um, I mean, ambitious mm. and able to juggle more things than I'll do in my whole life in like a week. Yeah. And now she's got this beautiful baby that she's raising and she brings him to set and he's always around. And I mean, she's just a powerhouse and so generous. I can't say that enough. You also played soccer. Football, sorry. Mm -hmm. You're football, yeah. football. I prefer football. <laughs> soccer doesn't make sense. Yeah, I know. Um, and you stopped because of telenovela? Well, I stopped. The funny thing is I, I, I made a film about an aging athlete who was curious whether or not he could have ever made it. And when I made that film, I was living in that story so much that I was like, I want to give it another shot. And so I started playing again is what happened. And I, I was playing semi-professionally when I booked a telenovela. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can't come to set with a broken nose or a gouge in my eye. So yeah. I had to stop then. Were and you then, good? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I, I do honestly, like I do wonder. I, that's why I was so close to that story I made with my creative partner. It's because I do wonder. An aging athlete who uh, far past his prime is going to give it one last go. And the only place he can do it is in the place where he's from. Uh, his parents were from in Kurdistan. Uh, we decided to we decided to go to Kurdistan. It's also, I should also say, I don't think I mentioned that my creative partner and the director of that film. He is from there. He's Kurdish, okay. <laughs> born there. And so that's how I'm also now doing another film, a documentary about a Kurdish team in Sweden now. Um, again, football. Football I, I again. I love that, that you are, you know, mixing all of your passions uh, together. Yeah. I heard you have a story <laughs> from Tijuana that's a lot scarier than anything I've seen there. Well, it was scary. It was scary, especially looking back of what could have happened. I was there for a, um, a modeling job and I was told to go to park on the US side of the border, walk across and wait in front of the uh, McDonald's on the Mexico side of the border and wait for a gold Nissan Sentra with California plates. And so I'm waiting there for a while and they're like, dress down, you know, wear a hat or something. Okay. So I got a hat on, I'm waiting and waiting a little while. I'm like, oh, they're running a little late. Okay. Uh, and then the gold Nissan Sentra walks by and I'm kind of anxious to get going because this feels a little weird anyways, like waiting for a car to pull up. Uh, and then the gold Nissan Sentra with California plates pull up, honks, waves me over. I go over and I say, first mistake, are you here to pick up Jose? And he says, yes, yeah, of, course. of course. So I get in and we're driving, we're driving along and I notice there's no um, lock on the, oh, on no. the door, which is weird. Like, 
I'm like, that's you see in movies, you know? Yeah. I can't get When out of this kidnapped. door. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even get out of this door if I want to get out. Um, oh man, I'm realizing my mom hasn't heard this story yet, so if she ever sees this. Well. Uh, <laughs> so we, we're driving and we're getting along fine, but then we pull into this outdoor market, like it's like a football field in length, real foot, football field in length. And he parks at the beginning and he says, okay, we're here. And I said, are we at the studio? Like we're at the, this is where the studio is. He says, no, no, we're going to meet the client here. And I said, okay. He said, so let's go. And he motioned me to get out and I grabbed my bag. And he says, no, just leave your stuff here. It's better, just leave it safer. You know, you stand out. I said, no, I'm gonna take it. I'll take it with me. He says, no, please just leave it. I said, I'm gonna take it. He says, okay, let's put it in the trunk. And so he's like so insistent. I say, okay. Yeah. But I take my passport, wallet, phone, keys out and put it in my pocket and leave that in the trunk. And then we're walking down the market all the way to the back. People are looking at me kind of funny and I'm clocking that. I feel like Jason Bourne now. Mm -hmm. My like spidey oh, sense, yeah. you know, you, you feel like yeah. something's yeah, not yeah. quite right. Uh, and we get to the back and he says, have a seat at this taqueria. And I sit down and as soon as I sit down, they bring out an opened bottle of Coke. It's open, set it down. And I said, no, I'm okay. And like, Can we get you some food? No, I'm good. Is this the client coming? Like, oh yeah, we just gotta go get him. And I see the guy who brought me. <laughs> I'm sorry, a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> I see the guy who brought me walk behind me and into the, into the taqueria. And there's two guys in the back and he says something to them. And it sounded like, agaralo, like grab mm -hmm. him. And I said, that's a funny thing to say. And then I watch him walk out and disappear around the corner. And in that moment, I'm like, okay, If this is really happening and I run, I save my life, maybe. Or, or a lot of money or organs or something. It's, if I'm not and I run, I look like an idiot, but maybe I can deal with that. So I like... Looks like the better choice <laughs> to look like an idiot. <laughs> yeah. So I casually stand up and, and there's a pinata hanging there and I kind of admire the pinata and then I take off sprinting. And I get to where the cars are all parked in the middle and I get behind one and look back through the window and I see the two men run out, like in a movie, like come out. And one says, go that way. And the other says, go that way. And they start running. And so I, and at that moment, my phone rings and it's my agency. They're like, hey, Jose, how are you? Are you coming to the, uh, are, you, are you running a little late for, to the, the McDonald's? They're there for you. I said, no, no, I got in the car with a Jorge. His name is Jorge. Do they know a Jorge? They're like, What do you mean you got in the car? Get in the clients on the three-way call now. And they're like, no, no, get out of there. Get out of there. Get somewhere safe and then call us back and tell us where you are. So I'm running out to this marketplace oh and I made it to a place where I felt safe and uh, called and they came and picked me up and they were stressed out like crazy, the client. because Of course they will be. I mean, can you imagine? The best part is, and I want to make a little short film about this because the best part is <laughs> I end up Like half an hour later, I'm in a Speedo shooting <laughs> for their spring catalog and getting sprayed down with spray tanner so I can be more brown. Like I'm in Mexico, they imported me and then now they're making me more brown. <laughs> It was like... And you almost got kidnapped. And but, I almost got kidnapped. But yet the photo shoot happened. Oh yeah. And I didn't, it didn't really wow. hit me until I was driving home. I was like, wow. Could have been bad. You should make that into a short film. I have one, the one reason I, I don't think I have yet is because I don't want to necessarily give Mexico any bad press, yeah. you know? But the, that's yeah. why I was like, maybe in this version, I do look like an idiot and they were just trying to give me some delicious tacos and a fresh cook, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. yes, you should go for that out. Thank you so much. Thank you, this was fun. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs>
Podcast.